Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. We will, in time, tomorrow, finish Mark 4. But today, I want to read to you what the Lord gave to me Sunday morning. It is such a blessing, and I just feel it's going to bless you. So, as you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. And if this isn't for you, share it with someone else. It will bless them. Amen. And so, I'm going to wait just for a minute as people might be joining in. I don't usually do a set time anymore. And so, I know it might be different times. And people might not be expecting me on Facebook. But welcome those of you on Facebook and welcome those of you on YouTube. And so we are entering into another week of November. Hey, Lottie, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. You're going to love today, Lottie. And you know, the Lord is just putting it. Thank you, Lottie. The Lord has just been putting it on my heart, you know, to keep coming at different angles as we're in back to basics. It's still necessary to bring in critical voices at different points because we have to guard our heart. Remember the four steps of critical voices are awareness, being aware of it. Second, understanding it by scripture. And then third, being vigilant. And fourth, creating a habit. And so you have to be on guard, not allowing the enemy to bring issues of the heart and get a hold of you. We don't want that. We want to have clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is near, but those who have eyes to per perceive it, like Jesus says in Matthew 5, in the Beatitudes are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And that's what we want. We want a pure heart. Amen. Hey, Katie, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so I'm going to read to you Interestingly enough, and I haven't added this component, I am in just a minute, but I'm going to read to you the note that God put on my heart yesterday that I posted on Facebook, and I'm fixing to post it on my WordPress blog, Robin Kirby Gatto, WordPress. If you're not subscribed, message me, and I'll send you my WordPress blog, and you will get emails that will have the actual note. Thank you, Katie as well as generally a video with it. Good morning, Kim Mitchell. God bless you. I think I'll be in your area again at a church. I'll keep you posted. I had so much fun ministering in Winfield a couple weeks ago, a week ago, <clears throat> and was so blessed. And I look, it looks like I might be going up to that area to Brilliant, and I'll keep you posted. And so, I want to bring this to you today because I just got so much analogy out of it. And the Lord woke me up. Things were on my heart. And God just spoke to me and comforted my heart. You know, as I mentioned the other day, if you're not on my YouTube channel, subscribe and you'll see where I did last Friday. I did perplexity. And it was so powerful. It was really powerful. Perplexity. Sometimes we're perplexed at a crossroads and we don't know which way to take and it's a hard stop. And in those hard stops, God allows our heart to be dealt with where things that are on it can come to the surface and come out of us. Amen. So we can perceive the kingdom of God. Remember, we're doing back to basics and I want to bring this note in today because we're still doing the kingdom of God. And I will finish Mark 4 with the parable about the kingdom. But I want to get into where scripture says in uh, the Matthew 5, where it says in, uh, let's see which one it is. <clears throat> Uh, three, Matthew 5, 3, blessed, happy to be envied and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions are the poor in spirit, the humble who rate themselves insignificant for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we're still in back to basics. And so as with 
that perplexity, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, that I shared last week, where we're pressed in on every side, but not crushed, we're perplexed, but not in despair. And so that word perplexity in Greek can mean uncertain and to doubt. And so there are times of, of uncertainty where you don't know which direction to take. It's a fork in the road and a hard stop. And at the hard stop, God might be purifying your heart so that you can clearly hear the direction you're to take and walk in the power of the kingdom of heaven. And as Matthew 5, 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so there are going to be many persecutions without and fears within, like Paul says. There's fightings without and fears within. And let me do that scripture as well. I like getting you scriptures to say you have them. Fightings uh, without and fears within. That scripture is 2 Corinthians 7, 5. Fightings within and fears without is what Paul said. And so, in this place, in walking in the basics of the kingdom of heaven, there is humility, and there's going to be fightings within and fears without, and you're going to be at a fork in the road and a hard stop and not know which direction to go. And this is what God wanted me to bring to you today at that fork in the road. Because that fork in the road is a place in which you listen to the coach about the game plan. And I'm going to read to you my note. And I'll put, for those of y'all on YouTube, I'll put a link to my WordPress blog where you can subscribe to that and get that in your emails. <clears throat> and so I put this up on Facebook yesterday as God woke me up. So the picture is actually a queen in the middle of this chessboard, and there are pawns on the side of her. And so it says God's game plan, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. We all know that, and I'm fixing to read that in a minute. Listen to the coach about the game plan and not the analyst. The Lord has been speaking to me for the last couple of days, the words game plan. A game plan is a plan of achieving success in a specific situation. I kept pondering on this idea <clears throat> when the Lord woke me up last night and things were being played and rewind. Now, this was from Saturday night into Sunday. In my heart of what others had spoken, making it obvious that they listened to the critical voice of someone else about me which has happened frequently in the past, and I just don't address it nor defend myself, although it seems irrelevant, whatever they're speaking to me. So I want to say this because, as Paul said, we have fightings without and fears within. We are perplexed, but not in despair, that in this space, you have to listen to your coach, God, Jeremiah 29, 11, his plans, his thoughts for you, and not the analyst of the critical voice that would try to speak inside of you. And if you haven't watched the Critical Voices series on my YouTube channel, please message me. I'll be glad to see it. Send it. So let me read this first paragraph again, and then I'll read on into the second. The Lord has been speaking to me for the last couple of days, the words game plan. A game plan is a plan of achieving success in a specific situation. I kept pondering on this idea when the Lord woke me up last night and things were being played and rewind in my heart of what others had spoken, making it obvious that they listened to the critical voice of someone else about me, which has happened frequently in the past, <clears throat> and I just don't address it nor defend it, although it seems irrelevant what they're saying to me. <clears throat> God then shows me the person who has hypnotized them with the log in their own eye, where the bitterness in their heart has them projecting what's inside of them upon me, having others convinced I'm a certain way. This is why God allows things to happen in your life, removing the analyst of the lie of the enemy who is projecting defeat in your life. Glory to God. So think of this, saints. Consider this. This whole thing is about God's game plan of Jeremiah 29, 11. His hope, 
his future for your life. And I'm fixing to bring in the Alabama Crimson Tide and bring in how the analysts have been projecting demise and defeat. And even when they played at LSU Saturday night in Death Valley, guess what? As the naysayers, the booers were booing them, it had no effect. They didn't listen to the naysayers, the boos. And it's so funny because Jalen Milrow, <clears throat> as well as uh, Arnold, uh, Terry Arnold, created a line last year, and they have it this year still, let all naysayers know. And they have the Alabama A for all. And that, that is, is called Lank. Let a naysayer know. Let all naysayers know. And so you're going to have naysayers. You're going to have a critical voice in your life. You're going to have analysts. But you got to turn away from it. And so it can be the internal critical voice, the criticism that might come up in your heart, making it obvious that others had said negative things about you, believed negative things about you, and you have just got to remain humble. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So this is back to basics. So guess what? God allows circumstances in your life to keep you humble. And I call it being a stomp. Isaiah 6, 13, I'll never forget in year one, God's firewall, school of the prophets, as well as healing of the soul. In 2012, I did a teaching on Isaiah 6, 13, that the remnant's going to be a stomp. We see in Micah, 4, Micah 2 and Micah 4 that the remnant are lame. You are so lame. You are a lame stomp. I am a lame stomp. That is humility. That is poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God says in Isaiah 66, 2, He said, Who will build a house for me? For this is the person on whom I will look, he that has a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to have the kingdom of heaven if you got a log in your eye. And like Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5, about not criticizing, not judging, lest you be criticized or judged by the measure that you give out and pull the log out of your eye to help others pull the splinter out of their eye. The great thing, saints, is because Jesus tells us to pull the log out of our eye. It doesn't come out by osmosis. And again, that's why I have the series up which includes awareness, understanding, vigilance, and, and uh, habit. <clears throat> Once you implement that, then guess what? You're going to have the ability to pull splinters out of other people's eyes. And it's gentle, and it's loving, and it's not condemning. And I love doing that. I love being able to help others see the splinter in their eyes so that they can pull it out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did not do my hot tea this morning. Okay, so let me do the next par paragraph. God then shows me the person who has hypnotized them through the log in their own eye with the bitterness in their heart, projecting what's inside of them upon me, having others convinced that I'm that certain way. This is why God allows things to happen in your life, removing the analyst of the lie of the enemy who is projecting your defeat in your life. Now listen to say, listen to this, saints. Have you not seen or understood that there is a lying spirit criticizing you in the tongue of others that are allowing the enemy to use their tongue as a weapon against you? If you didn't know about it, you first and foremost wouldn't get away from it. And you would just tolerate it. Don't tolerate verbal abuse. Don't tolerate criticism. The word is good for instruction and reproof. It doesn't say the word of God is good for condemnation. And so a lot of people think, oh, well, there's good, there's constructive criticism. Uh, no, there's not. Uh, there is constructive instruction know the difference 
and we've so tolerated criticism around us, thinking it is normal. It isn't normal. It is Satan, and it wants to condemn you. It wants to keep you small. It wants you to feel bad, and it wants you to be in this hamster wheel going in this same space over and over and over again where you're not able to break out and go into your destiny. And this is what I'm going to bring up the Alabama football team because they have so many strikes against them, according to other people. For me, I see it as one of their greatest potential power years ever for playing football to me because I'm not a doubter. I'm not uncertain about Alabama football. I am certain. I have faith because I see the best. I believe the best. Saints, how much more should you be about yourself? You know, we do this about football teams. How much more should you be like that about yourself? At the fork in the road where the doubt and the unbelief and the uncertainty is because the background noise of analysts saying, oh, you're going to mess up. You're not going to do right. Who do you think you are? You're not going to make it. It is the background noise keeping you small. I will never forget this, and I am going to read this note. But y'all, I will never forget this. For those of y'all who have read my Jezebel note that I wrote about 2010, 2011, something, 2009 maybe. I don't know. Early on. Early on. And so, I had been under a woman that was my mentor for years. I was with a glow lighthouse, a local glow lighthouse, many, many years ago in the mid-2000s. And then I got onto the board as I became secretary and then vice president. And the president of that aglow, she had her own ministry. And I became like her right-hand person, but she had a Jezebel spirit. And right before I left her, and so I was taking her to the doctor, she would just have diarrhea on the floor, and I'd be coming, cleaning her house, and I realized that she was treating me like a dog. She was treating me like a dog, and if I didn't do what she wanted me to, she would have other people that were under her manipulation calling me to harass me to go help her. But this is what thing, one thing God did is I was in a meeting at my Princess Warriors meeting at my house when I started Princess Warriors in 2005, 2006. I started Princess Warriors, and she was sitting around while I was getting a prophetic word, and the prophetic word was about I would have these books and write these books, and that they'd be amazing, and actually my book was being looked at by Destiny Image, the Glory to Glory Sisterhood at that moment was being looked at by Destiny Image the publishing company, and I had this amazing word by Susie Weiss in it, and I'll never, ever, ever, ever forget this. The analyst was exposed. All of a sudden, my ears popped. I kid you not, they popped open like riding on an airplane, and as they popped open, I heard, Little Robin, Little Robin, Little Robin, and she always called me Little Robin, and the, then the Lord opened my ears and she said, Robin, no, you're not supposed to write books right now. You're, you're, you're going too fast. You da, 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 da. And all of a sudden my ears popped open and I heard her saying, little Robin, little Robin, little Robin. And the Holy Spirit just shouted in me, in my inner man, you are not little. Get away from her. And afterwards, when I got away, as the Holy Spirit had me leave that relationship that's when I audibly felt my back. I mean, I, I physically felt and audibly heard. Like my back from the top of my spine to the bottom, opening up six inches. It physically, I physically felt it. And I was like, what is going on? And then I audibly and physically felt and I audibly heard three octopus tentacles slurping out of my back, and then my body's thrown. And I was like, what? And then the power of Holy Spirit flooded me. And I said, God, what was that? And my Jezebel notes are on my Robin Kirby Gatto WordPress blog, as well as in my book, Princess Warriors. And so I said, God, what was that? And he said, that was the Jezebel spirit sucking on your anointing. Get away. Do not go back anymore. And you know what, saints? 
That was an analyst keeping me from God's destiny for my life. You don't realize, I mean, because it's so subtle. That was subtle where it just a little bit at a time, a little bit, little bit, little bit. And in other relationships recently, in the in this past couple months, three months, God has just snapped my ears, popped my ears open, woke me up and shown me manipulations in which I was being made to feel small and little. And it was just the background noise of analysts. It's the same with Alabama football. And I'm fixing to bring that in just, to, in just a minute in my note. But I want you to consider, saints of God, the background noise of analysts in your life that keep you small, that is keeping you from your God-given destiny by projecting their own insecurities and their own badness and their own negative issues, their log upon you. And worse yet, what God calls an abomination is talking to others about it and being a false witness and false accusations and hypnotizing others about it. And God calls that abomination. Why? Because you'll have to give an answer for every idle word you speak. And you don't realize the influence of the enemy that can hypnotize others to believe that that is real and think poorly about other people. The first sign of God's kingdom is the love of Christ. Our love, as we have God's love in us, that they will know us for our love for one another. We see that in John 17. We see it in 1 John, the book of 1 John. We see it in the 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. And so let me go forward. God showed me in August of this year. Uh, God showed me in August of this year. Man's rejection is not only his protection, but God's favor. Jesus knew this well as he prepared his disciples for this. This morning, God used the Alabama football team as an analogy. I graduated from Alabama in 1999 with my master's in social work and am a huge Royal Tide fan. Since the new coaching change of having Kalen DeBoer with the retirement of Coach Saban, there have not only been doubters, but poor analysts by professional sports analysts. I'm beyond excited for DeBoer as I knew something was special about him. When then, before Saban's announcement, he was Washington's head coach and played in the national championship this January. I could just see the God, light of God's glory in him, and I was rooting for Washington to win. Little did I know within a week he would be the new Alabama head coach after that national playoff. I watched as analysts criticized the tide coming into their new season, as well as other doubters sounded their displeasure when they lost two games. I, on the other hand, never doubted. I wasn't at the crossroad. I knew the direction to go with Alabama. Now, remember perplexity being at the crossroad. And at that crossroad, it's a hard stop. You're only going to move forward when you have certainty of God's hope, God's plan. Amen. Praise God, Lisa. Hey, Monica. I could see the potential. I, I on the other hand, never doubted. I could see the potential and power in a special coaching staff and a group of young men who played for Alabama. All while analysts said poor things about the Todd, never once did I believe them. Listen, I didn't sit on this couch being like, uh, you know, oh my goodness, the Todd might be bad. Oh my gosh, the Todd is going to be in trouble. No, I was like Stephen A. He is so hilarious. I was like Stephen A. When they talked about uh, Alabama, Stephen A. said, that's blasphemy. Don't talk about Roll Tide that way. Yeah, that You should be saying that. I can't believe that. That's how I was. I was certain. Listen, God in heaven, he knows his plan for your life. He is not saying, oh my goodness. Oh, I've heard bad things that's coming out of other people's mouth about Robin's life. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. God is not stressed out. He knows his plan. He knows his intent. I love the word, for I know the thoughts, Mechashaba, Jeremiah 29, 11. And that word thoughts actually means invent. And it means intent. And so when you look at it, I and and the and when I wrote about this in Rev 22, 2, 
in this context that we are an invention of God's intention. And when you know what you were created to do for God's kingdom, for the kingdom of heaven, and you stay humble and you stay pure, you get the log out of your eye and the kingdom of heaven is yours, then you're going to know and you're going to be at that perplexity, that that crossroad and that hard stop, and you are just going to go in the plan of God. It is going to fill you and flood you. All while analysts said poor things about the tide. Never once did I believe them. In fact, they were. I told Rich they were crazy. And I told my husband, they need to let me be an analyst. Not only for Alabama, but I could see the potential of South Carolina, Ole Miss, Georgia Tech, even when they started playing first in Ireland. When we, we started out, I'm like, they are crazy. These analysts don't know these teams. Not only did they doubt the Tide, but other amazing teams, which several times they picked the wrong one for the win. God then spoke to me, my husband's message to me, he's so awesome. God then spoke to me today saying that all the critical voices in my life of those whom he is keeping me from are nothing but poor analysts. And have not God's thoughts for my life. They do nothing but predict my defeat. It is the lying tongue of Isaiah 54, 17. It's the same for you. The critical voice of others in your life is our poor analysts predicting your defeat based on what is in them. And you've got to get away. I said, thank you, God. Instead of going over their poor analytics and their criticism of who they see me to be and convince others I am, all I am to do is to look to God's game plan, his hope for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear you and heed you. Then you will seek me and inquire for, and require me as vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That is powerful. That is God's plan. He is our coach. And Linda says, I have many. Linda, we all do. That's what Jesus said. That, that, and that's, what the, that, that's what's written about all through the New Testament, especially that the unrighteous persecute the righteous. And so if you have not listened to my critical voices, then you're going to be just in this same loop. Listen, that series was given divinely by God. All that I've gone through was for that series. It has a yoke destroying anointing. And so many people, I'm just going to be blunt. I'm just going to be real, real. So many of you are on my Facebook and you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel and watched the playlist and you're messaging me about issues. And I keep telling you, watch my critical voices. If you are resisting it, it is because the devil in you does not want you to see it. If you are angry about it, it is because the log is so big in your eye. The bitterness is so deep that you want to hold on to your anger and not be delivered. I cannot help that. All I can do is pray. And so let me go on. It doesn't matter how others see you. They don't have God's game plan. He is our coach. Amen. Andrea knows she's had miracles. Christ, and this is the acronym God gave me for coach. He is our coach, which means Christ's opinion annihilating the criticism showing what is in heaven. Amen. Listen to that acronym again for coach. C-O-A-C-H. Christ's opinion annihilating the criticism showing what is in heaven. Praise God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
like chess. The devil uses pawns to speak poorly about who you are. News flash, you are royalty. You have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. In my head this morning, I thought of having conversations. And even Rich told me <coughs> to have conversations with people that had obviously, by their conversations with me that were irrelevant of what I was sharing, have obviously made it aware that they've been hypnotized by others who have a critical opinion about me. And so I had considered it. And uh, let me read this again. In my head this morning, I thought of having conversations with those who are hypnotized under the opinion of an analyst who sees my defeat. And God said, I am your defense. I am your defense. He said, simply love and say nothing. Believe the best for everyone will have to give an account to Christ for everything they've said about you that is critical. And it's the same for you, saints of God. Moreover, they're paying for it now as they're eaten up with seeing their own ana analysis not coming to pass in your life and being consumed with convincing themselves and others that they're right, wrong, Glory to God. You have to know that God is for you. And if he is for you, who can be against you? Glory to God. Keep your eyes on God and his game plan. Know that you win. Glory to God. You win. It is already done. It is already finished. Stay away from the poor analyst who have a log in their eye. Don't pay attention to the projection of Satan's defeat. And let me bring this up just in a minute because I want to bring in this because I looked this up this morning. This morning. And it's powerful. It is powerful. Oh, good. I got it. I got it pulled up. Okay. Oh, y'all. Only God. Okay. I'm almost finished. Only God. Only God. I already feel the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. God showed me last night when Alabama played LSU. They didn't listen to the booze, the projection of the poor analysts. They were in Death Valley at LSU in Baton Rouge, having played the heart, one of the hardest places in college football because Baton Rouge at night is the hardest place to play. And they have not de been defeated at night at home for a long time. They were at Death Valley having played one of the hardest places in college football. When then in the valley, there is a door of hope. That is Habakkuk 2.14, 2, 2 through 15. That there is a door of hope in the valley. And God will bring rain because it was raining. And I kept telling everybody before the game, I said, it's going to rain. <coughs> and Alabama is going to play a better game because they play better in the rain than LSU. And LSU's going to lose for sure because we pl we play better in the rain. For sure. In the rain, glory to God. Now, let me read that again. They were in Death Valley having played one of the hardest places in college football. Ball. When then in the valley, as they were playing, they entered the door of hope. God will bring the rain, glory to God, as you do play by play of his plan for your life. Not only defeat hell's opinion, but let the wind speak for itself. Glory to God. In the end, the booers walked away that nearly most of the stadium, three-fourths of the stadium in the fourth quarter was empty. And the main people there were Alabama fans who stayed and cheered and the sound of victory rose up. The coach's plan worked. In the valley of death, God is with you. Psalm 23. His rod and staff bring protection and comfort. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. Be glad God is keeping the haters from you. Be glad they don't want to be around you. Forgive and love them.
for they know not what they do. Isaiah 54, 17. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Amplified classic. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall show it to be in the wrong. You shall win. Woo! This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over oppression is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced, the humble hearts. This is the righteousness or the vindication which they obtain from me. This is that which I impart to them as their justification. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. Blessed, happy to be envied and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction and God's favor and salvation, regardless of your outward conditions, are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Be glad and supremely joyful for your reward in heaven. Woo! Hallelujah. Is great, strong, and intense. For in this same way, people persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so I'm going to end with this in a minute. It's so powerful. And so, of course, we were watching the recap of the game, the highlights, again yesterday and again today. Because it was just so powerful, y'all. It was just so powerful. The rain's coming down. That Louisiana crowd is the most, that environment is the most hostile environment in college football at nighttime. There is no other hostile environment compared to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And of course, it specifically is for the Crimson Tide. And so, this is what I found just so amazing. And so, as I watched the highlights, I noticed it a few times, but I pointed it out to Rich because it was so powerful. And so, early on, is J Jalen Milrow broke a record from the 1970s. Okay, y'all? He broke a record from the 1970s in Alabama football. That is how record-breaking. Alabama had already lost two games this year. People were just saying, oh, they're poor, they're bad, they're this. Well, uh, nobody told them. <laughs> uh, they didn't believe it. They were not at a fork in the road. They knew which direction they were going to go, and that was for the next win, for the next win, for the next win. And so in one of the four touchdowns by Jalen Milrow himself making the touchdown, running in, by one of those four touchdowns, Jalen Milrow runs into the end zone, and he goes up to this young boy who's an Alabama fan and at the end zone in the stands. And he goes up and he's giving him five. And on one side of him, there is an LSU man. He's probably my age in his 50s. And he's just going, boo, boo. And Jalen Miro ain't paying him no attention. Jalen Miro didn't even think about the man. He played the coach's plan. And Jalen Milrow and the Crimson Tide had a record-breaking defeat over LSU. Now, this is what I did today at the Lord's leading. And so, oh, let me get this name pulled up again <coughs> right here because I forgot what one of them meant. So, this is what I found interesting yeah, I remember it. Why did I not remember it? I should remember it. And say, so, y'all, there's a siren. Just wait a minute. We live by a fire department. I know, right? Janice, I sent you I sent you the hottie. Not I mean not the hottie toddy, but we watched the Ole Miss game too. That was good. Ole Miss broke a record. We watched that game and we watched the Miami Georgia Tech game. We had a most phenomenal time on Saturday. It was an amazing time on Saturday. And so, uh, Jalen, so God told me, he said, Robin, look up Jalen's name. So Jalen's name is Jalen Oluwasun 
Isaiah Milrow. So listen to that. It's four names. Jalen, J-A-L-E-N, Oluwasu'un, O-L-U-W-A-S-E-U-N, Isaiah Milrow. And I, first of all, God said, Robin, look up what Jalen means. And I said, well, okay. And Jalen means, actually, the name meaning of Jalen, it means tranquil. It means healer. It means calm and like a lion. And if that does not depict that young man, nothing shakes him when, they're, when they are playing. Even if he does a bad play, he's tranquil. He's calm. Think about it. And this is what God showed me. He said, Robin, a lion doesn't in the jungle when a dog comes and barks at it. A lion isn't going, oh, oh my goodness, a dog is barking. Oh my goodness, I'm scared. No, a lion is just standing there calm thinking, what does this creature think it's doing? I am so much bigger than this creature. I can trample on this creature. And y'all, scripture even says that when we finally find out how Satan is when we've left this earth and he is just like a little worm. We are just going to be blown away. And this is what the Lord started showing me. Jalen means healer, tranquil, calm, like a lion. That we, the righteous, are as bold as a lion. We know who we are in Christ. And we can be at peace because we have the kingdom of heaven in us. And we can know God's game plan. And then I looked at Oluwasun. Y'all, this is crazy. Because Oluwasun, you know what that means? Thank God. Thank God. And I went, what? Because y'all, at Rich's work on Friday more, on Friday of last month, of last week, or no, Tuesday. It was Tuesday after the election. Something like that. I came back and I dropped Rich off and uh, there was, no, it was after I went to pick him up. I think it was Friday. There was a personalized tag that said, thank God. And I posted it on my Facebook. And so Jalen means healer, calm, tranquil, like a lion. And then Oluwasun means thank God. And Isaiah means salvation is in God. And his last name, Milro, means son of the redhead. And all I could think of is Jesus' hair white as snow. And I just thought of fire. And I also thought of David, where it says that he was ruddy. And that ruddy means redness. And it was talking about life and vivaciousness in him. And so when you put the whole name meaning together, for Jalen, Aluwasun, Isaiah, Milrow, it is, you are a lion, be calm, be tranquil, thank God, and know that salvation is in God, which means whatever you need, he has it. It means healing, it means provision, it means deliverance, It whatever you need. That's what salvation means, and that you know that you are a son and a daughter of God. Is that not powerful, saints of God? I mean, that is pretty potent. I'm going to have this on my YouTube channel and have the link to my WordPress blog. Y'all read it. It is powerful. And I pray that you know the coach's game plan, Christ's opinion that annihilates the criticism showing what's in heaven. And that as you know, the coach's opinion, God's opinion, what who Christ is in you, that all the poor analysts that are surrounding you will fade away and that you will go in for the win in Jesus' mighty name and go ahead and thank him. Thank God for the win. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.